decided to make this film to make other people aware, families, friends, anyone really, that how a ruptured brain aneurysm has affected me. I have decided to make this film because I think that people should be aware of how a ruptured brain aneurysm not only affects the person but it also affects everyone around them, friends, family, colleagues, fellow students. January the 8th, 2014, started out like any other day for me. When I helped my mum with the horses, even spoke to her halfway through the morning to say that, you know, she phoned me to uh, tell me about her hospital appointment. Everything was fine there. And I had my morning lecture. And then it was lunchtime, and we had quite a late lunch that day. Uh, decided to grab a cup of coffee and go out for our usual cigarette. And I was having a normal conversation. In fact, the conversation was about giving up smoking. And that's when it happened. It started with really bad pain in my head. The only way I could describe it, it felt like somebody was stabbing knives into my head. Never had this happen before, but that's what I'd imagine that it would be like. And then I couldn't, the light, the light was just hurting me. That was, that was the worst, the headache I could cope with. It was the light I couldn't cope with. And then I realised that my left side of my body had gone into like tremors and my arm was shaking. And I sort of said to uh, my fellow students, Matt and Claire, hey, look at my arm. And we laughed and joked. And then I sort of lost my vision and all I heard then was Matt say, Claire, call 999, I'm getting, not going to get help. I don't remember Matt leaving me, but he must have done to go and get the help. It didn't take long in rapid response, a vehicle turned up. He introduced himself, but I remember he had dark hair. And I was answering all the questions, but visually I, I wasn't aware of anything going on. I remember them saying for me to listen out for the sirens of the ambulance. I'm not sure what words were spoken, but I remember just listening out for the sirens. I heard the sirens, and that was the last thing that I remember before laying in a bed and my mum crying, standing next to me. I remember saying to her, don't cry, Mum. I'm going to be fine. I could 
could hear, I was, I was like in a bubble. I could hear people talking around me. But I wasn't, I, it didn't feel like they were near. I was, they were sort of in the distance. Remember, the next thing I remember was being told that I was going to be blue lighted up to French A Hospital. My mum said to me, Do what about the girls, my daughters, Emily and Kelsey? I said, Just tell them mummy's got a bad headache. At that time, that's what I thought I had a really bad headache. And then I saw the paramedics turn up to take me to French A. I just looked at this guy and said, Mum, I'm going to be okay. I was in the Navy with him. He'll look after me. He used to mend aircraft, aircraft with me. But I knew I was safe then. don't remember the drive up to French A at all. Um, next thing that I actually remember from that night was it seemed every member of my family came up one by one and took my hand. They were all crying. In my head I thought, is this it? Am I going to die? My girls weren't there. So I couldn't, couldn't go. Remember telling everyone that I was going to be okay. That's all I said, I will be okay. And thankfully, I am. My stay in hospital was a month. They found that I had another aneurysm, uh, which they couldn't operate on, because uh, my heart decided to uh, have a few funny little turns. So as I'm sitting here, making this film, I still have another brain aneurysm, which I have decided to uh, wait until I finish my degree before I have it operated on. I've lost about three weeks of my life there's three weeks in French A that I cannot remember at all. Um, I've asked to be told what happened to my family and they refuse to tell me. They say all they, all they say is it's better off you do not know. But that's hard, not knowing. And I struggle with that every day. But I know my family have my best interests at heart. The hardest part for me is not remembering my children coming to see me. I remember low dependency unit, that's when I was starting from, I started to know what was happening. I was in a lot of pain. The first time they tried to get me out of bed, collapsed on the floor with the pain. 
so bad. But I've been bleeding on the brain for 18 hours, if not more. And the amount of blood and fluid that I had pressing down on my spinal cord uh, took away the ability to be able to walk. Um, but slowly, all the blood dissipated through my body and I was able to uh, walk first with a frame. I used a frame for about a week and a half and then progressed to crutches. And now I've got a stick. Uh, I lose my balance quite easily. I don't know whether that's the other aneurysm playing a part. But the other aneurysm is on my communicating artery.